What is going on guys? Brown here. Welcome back to the Williams RTG career mode here today for part 3 at the Canadian Grand Prix. The start of this video is going to be a bit different because the whole qualifying part of this video that I'd edited decided to corrupt. So I'm going to let Crofty talk his normal stuff and then we'll get into the race. So sorry about this. It's very annoying. But I'll make sure it's sorted for the next episode. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle. And average lap speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into Turn 1. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Norris, Max Verstappen and Ricardo, Gasly, Vettel, Sainz and Lance Stroll, Sonoda, Fernando Alonso, Kimi Raikkonen and Ocon. Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, Charles Leclerc, they've taken a grid penalty, and George Russell, Mazepin, and Brown. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Well, the strategy has always been a two stop here in Montreal. And he's starting on the soft, going to the mediums, and back to the soft. It's a, if everything works out as planned. But we need a good start here. We need to make up some positions. And it's lights out and away we go here in Canada. It's bone die on the track. It's not 2011 but we've got a good start. We're going to try and go to the inside and there goes Nikita Mazepin. Absolutely sends it. We forced him to the inside. And he absolutely went for it. We've only gained one position. The Ferrari Charles Leclerc is all the way down in the back as well. Um, after a penalty and he's going wheel to wheel with Antonio Giovinazzi we've only gained one place so far as we are going to send it down the inside of George Russell our teammate George gives it the space but we've made him lose out to Mick Schumacher now we send it down the inside of Charles Leclerc can we get the exit yes we can we've also got the other out um, the Alfa Romeo as well as we really aggressively squeezed Charles Leclerc there that was a bit aggressive that was probably would have necessary as the Alfa Romeo goes back at Giovinazzi comes back at Charles Leclerc as we are now all over the back of the Iceman can we go down the inside no we're at Mazepin we haven't got to him yet we're nearly there Mazepin we get past they're both white cars it's very, very easy to get confusing from these long camera angles. We goes back down the inside there. And Charles Leclerc now getting the key to Mazepin. So Mazepin's mega star absolutely sending it. Hasn't taken him long to go back down at the back. That's how bad this arse is as we nearly lose it. We have got past the Esteban Ocon in the Alpine. And now... We are on the back of Kimi Raikkonen. Is we going to go to the outside of Kimi Raikkonen? Try and send it around the outside of Kimi Raikkonen. We now have the inside line for turn two. And we get the job done there. And we're up into P13. After starting last, and there's Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel Ricciardo's got an issue. And he's out of the race. His engine is blown. And Kimi Raikkonen goes back down our inside. And he looks to have got the position on us. But we're still there. We're not going to give up against the Iceman. The most experienced driver in F1 history. Kimi Raikkonen 
defends us and retakes P13. We try and go around the outside of the final corner. That isn't going to happen. And now, do we have enough to send it down the inside into the first corner? We are just a little bit too far back. But we've lost out again to Kimi Raikkonen. And we're going to have to launch another attack. It's like it wasn't back in Bahrain. If you remember that, come with we Kimi Raikkonen. This, that time we were defending a Kimi Raikkonen. This time we're attacking. And we've got the job done that time on Kimi Raikkonen. And now it's Van Ocon. And Charles Leclerc's having a look. It's Van Ocon trying to go to the outside. And round the outside, Kimi Raikkonen defends. But Ocon has the inside line. Does he have the traction? And no, it doesn't look like he has. But he's kept his nose in there. And now down the inside into the second chicane. And he looks to have got the job done. This time, Kimi Raikkonen does have to back out. And Charles Leclerc now is on the back. As up, up front, the leaders are getting all involved. Sergio Perez leads the race to two Mercedes side by side. As they're side by side, they go. Bottas on the outside, Lewis on the inside. Through the first chicane, they're still side by side. Don't make contact, boys. And through the chicane, they go. That little kink. And into the second chicane. Oh no, there's contact. Valtteri Bottas has been spun round by Lewis Hamilton. Here's a replay of it into turn one. Bottas, very unrealistic in this game. Cody sorted out, Bottas can't overtake. So how is he overtaking Hamilton here? Round the outside, Lewis squeezes him. Lewis squeeze has enough of traction to go back round his outside. And now down the inside, and Lewis, you haven't given him enough space there. A Hamilton fan, but that's, that's on Lewis. But then from saying that, from that angle, it does look like he's left quite a bit of room, but it's brought out the safety car, Bottas spinning. So we've been able to make our first stop under the safety car, which kind of softens the blow as we don't lose that much time. But it also commits us to both sets of the mediums, where, of course, I did want to go back onto the softs. So... Unless we were to take these tyres miles, then we're going to have to go back onto the mediums again. So that's kind of our strategy now. As the safety car peels in, we've got Lando Norris up ahead. Yuki Tsunoda is popped out of nowhere and has got past Kimi Raikkonen. And now the race gets restarted as... Lando Norris, who was, was in front of us, has overtaken Fernando Alonso. And now we're going to go wheel to wheel with the double world champion. We're going to send it down the inside. There's nearly contact. We then try and send it all the way around the outside. But does Alonso keep the position? No, he's still there though. Into the second chicane, we back out of it. We don't want to spin him out like Jensen Button did in 2011. But this is Fernando Alonso at his best. He's a very hard racer, but he's also very fair. And that was a great battle. As now, going into the final corner, down the inside, we get Fernando Alonso that time. And now Yuki Tsunoda is having a look at the double world champion, the Spaniard. The driver from Japan gets the job done on Fernando Alonso. He overtook him in the real life Bahrain Grand Prix. And now Yuki is having a go at us round the outside. He has to back out of that one, but we've had a massive oversteer moment there. And now that's going to allow Yuki to go past both of them, both of us. And now Alonso is going to follow Yuki Sonoda through. And round the outside goes Fernando Alonso in his Alpine. We force him wide, and he is able and has to back out of it and he nearly lost out to um, Lance Stroll there as well by us squeezing him out as now Fernando Alonso he doesn't want this position to go round the outside he goes but we switch we do the cut back and we absolutely send him round 
You can get him back. And now here comes Lars Stroll on the inside. Going into turn one, there's contact. Stroll's already been spun round. And we, I think, have some floor damage from that. Fernando Alonso may have from wing damage. And Lars Stroll may have some damage as well. And so Fernando Alonso does have damage. As into the pits he comes, he does have front wing damage. And that has made his race go right down the drain. We have having such a hard but fair battle. And it's ended in tears for Fernando Alonso as he has to pit for a new front wing. And on lap 19 he comes out on the pits and three laps later we managed to extend our stint, extend our stint and we are going to come into the pits to put on our second set of medium tyres. Nearly made contact with the Alpha Tauri of Yuki Tsunoda as we came in and he came out of his pit box. There's Fernando Alonso though, he's found some great pace to get himself back in it. There's Fernando Alonso, where are we? We've only just beat Fernando Alonso out. So even with him changing his front wing, he's had some great pace. And now he's on the back of us. And now he's probably going to be even harder on us. Down the inside he goes. And we defend to the outside. The car didn't feel the same. We definitely had some floor damage. If you looked very carefully at the incident, you can see a bit of carbon fibre fly. As we now, we defend we defend Alonso and Alonso's lost out to Leclerc and Valtteri Bottas because these two are coming back through the field from Charles Leclerc's penalty at the start and Bottas' is spin and we are in P9 we've got two fast cars behind us we're hanging on for dear life in the points there's still a long long way to go this race seven laps if I can actually do maths as Charles Leclerc goes past as we try and read claim that position but our Williams is nowhere near that Ferrari and nowhere near if we go back down the inside of Charles Leclerc I'm desperate to keep these points but we've gone wide we've logged up Charles Leclerc does a switch back on us and now we're sat in the Ferrari slipstream the Ferrari not that quick either in a straight line is now we try and go back down the inside, we get past. And now Valdry Bottas tries to go down the inside, but Leclerc covers him off round the outside. And now, and now look at, look at Fernando Alonso, we're going back at Valdry Bottas. Down the inside goes Fernando Alonso. He now has the outside line, Bottas has the inside line, but Alonso can't get the traction and Bottas keeps the position. And now, Charles Leclerc is going to be having another look at us and it won't be long before Bottas does as well. Charles Leclerc has over overtaken us and now Valtteri Bottas, here he comes to deny us of points. He's passed us and our defence of P9 and P10 full short. We were so, so close to points. Of course, we got some in Monaco. We were greedy for more, but we're going to have to wait so so close and now skipping on to going on to the final lap they gone away i was just about sticking it just in front of fernando alonso but here comes alonso down our inside we force him wide and there goes lance stroll at his own grand prix of course he is canadian side by side on the final lap who's going to get p12 stroll goes to the inside alonso holds around the outside and now stroll's still there Looks like Alonso might just be ahead. No. Stroll has got his car just a little bit ahead. Now to the inside line. Stroll's got him. But Alonso is not giving up here. And Alonso keeps the position. Just. But Stroll's not done. Stroll's going to go to the outside. And now he has the inside line for the second part of the chicane. And he's got the job done. But Alonso is like that as Alonso goes back down the inside. What a race. What battle in between the two AI. And it looks like Lance Stroll may have this 12th place now. But Alonso weren't going to make it easy for him. As Lewis Hamilton wins. And we are going to come home for P11. We were so, so close to points. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. 
truly magnificent drive then and a great performance from the entire team to secure victory here in Canada. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. Well, that's been your Canadian Grand Prix for this first season um, of the Williams RTG. What a race it was. We were so close to points. We, we've only had good races this, so far this year, excluding Monaco. Because you're never going to get a good race there, let's be honest. Back into the paddock, though. And we are going to do some upgrades on the durability. Last time, of course, I was saying what we were focusing on. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. What a race it was. And I will see you in Silverstone for the next race.